Well, artificial intelligence is being used to rapidly track how preterm babies develop in neonatal intensive care. The QIMR Berghofer Institute, in collaboration with researchers from Austria and Finland, have found a non-invasive way of estimating a baby's developmental age at the bedside using just their heart rate. Dr Nathan Stevenson is one of those researchers and he joins me now live. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Firstly, tell us about the findings. G'day. Well, we have a real interest here in the health of our preterm babies. They're very special and we need to make sure they have the best opportunity at life. So one of the things we can look at is their heart rate and their heart beats. And every time your heart beats, particularly in these little ones, it generates a little electrical signal. And we can measure that signal and we can measure it over a long period of time. And when we do measure it, we were really interested to see how it changes while they're in the nursery. So how does it mature? And we found that we could get, we used artificial intelligence to really drill down into this heart rate signal to see how well it could tell us the age. And it turns out it can tell us the age really accurately, down to about a week on the maturation front. Oh, that's uh, terrific, given that, uh, you know, preterm babies can be so scary for parents in particular. How important is the use then of artificial intelligence in this? It really falls into a broader sort of field of precision medicine where we're really trying to find out as much information as we can. And this sort of massive increase in the amount of information that we, that we have can really help clinicians in, in how they do their job and also how they communicate with parents. And, and it can sort of, in the longer term, really reassure parents that everything's going okay. And it can really help clinicians to, to sort of act as fast as they can if things aren't looking so good. So how does it, I guess, help an infant by way of their treatment? So what it can do is, is that because we can sort of, with this tool, plot their development, we can sort of lay down milestones of where the infant needs to be. And clinicians can adjust their treatments or have a look and see if their treatment's having an effect by seeing if this infant as it's growing is following its maturation or its developmental trajectory. And through your research, as the baby grows, have you found that the results change? Uh, we do, we do. Um, we follow the, the, the maturational trajectory as we go and we really find that they, they can move around that developmental trajectory quite a bit, but it's important that they do grow along a normal line. And can you tell us right now, how do doctors, I guess, find out if premature babies have, or how do they find out that developmental age now? At the moment, they don't really know. I mean, they usually go on growth and things like that. So, you know, if the baby's getting heavier or if it's getting taller and things like that. But, but these sort of really detailed analysis don't exist in the nursery at the moment. So what happens next with your research? So as with everything, we've just started the research. We found some, some really promising results, but we need to really test it on, on lots and lots of babies. We need to make sure these AI methods behave themselves and don't do silly things at certain times. And so once we've really got that big cohort of babies collected, then we can think about rolling it out in the nursery and doing some proper clinical trials on it. So are there, I guess, risks with the use of artificial intelligence in this space? There are always risks with using artificial intelligence, but it's more a matter of due diligence. In the clinical space, we really need to make sure that these things are doing what we want them to do. So the amount of effort we have to put into researching them is a lot more than than, a, than an artificial intelligent method that can recognise cats from an image because the risks associated with it are much higher. Yeah, absolutely, it would be. Uh, when do you hope that this tool may be used? I know you said you've still got to do uh, some trials, some more research, but what's your hope for this next? Uh, my hope, we always hope, but it would be nice if we could roll it out within three to five years. Fingers crossed. Dr Nathan Stevenson, good to speak with you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.